Welcome to BSS Monitoring's podcast series. The podcast series dedicated to helping you, the network professional, increase visibility to all of the users and lowering your cost while doing so. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to VSS Monitoring's first podcast, the first of many to come in 2009. My name is Philip Powell, and I'll be your host for this podcast series. I hope you find them informative and useful. VSS is the world's leading innovator of distributed traffic capture systems and network taps. We give you the visibility essential to leverage your existing investments in monitoring tools and to take proactive control of your network. Today, we're going to be talking about the cost savings from VSS Monitoring's distributed traffic capture systems in monitoring video to one or more of three endpoints, to the TV, the PC, and mobile devices. We'll also be bringing you one of the latest product offerings from VSS, the 16x8 distributed tab. I'll be talking to you today about IPTV and over-the-top video. I'd like to begin the discussion with a look at two paradigms within service providers. First, we can see the reactive approach. It begins with the customer calling in about a problem they're having with their service. We'll talk more about this a bit later. Next, the technician begins the troubleshooting process by looking for any outages that may have occurred in the customer's area. If the technician can't find any, he'll begin looking for any potential problems within the customer's equipment. And we've all been there. Your TV isn't working and you call into the video company and they have you power off your equipment, reboot it, download new firmware, whatever their script tells them to do. I was talking to a friend about this last week. He had a problem and called into technical support. He ended up losing everything on his PVR because the technician had him restore to factory settings. Needless to say, he wasn't too happy. Finally, if the technician can't solve the problem that way, he'll escalate to a tier two tech who will delve further into this network problem. The technician will most likely begin looking at the most obvious fixes based upon the customer's complaint and then move into troubleshooting the individual components within the network, beginning with the last mile and ending with the distribution equipment. This laborious process can cost a service provider anywhere from $50 per issue up to several thousand dollars when several technicians are involved and it requires rolling trucks to several locations. What we're about to see is the second paradigm of troubleshooting video problems. It's the proactive approach. This approach involves the technician being notified of any outage through the software to some centralized console. At this time, both Tier 1 and customers may be notified of any potential issues they may encounter. Then the technician, who's likely a Tier 2 or Tier 3 tech, will troubleshoot the affected equipment. Now, obviously, this is a simplified approach, but that simplification does come at a cost. Traditionally, this would involve large-scale integration of software and huge hardware deployments for monitoring systems. This has proven largely unsuccessful due to the capital costs of deploying probes to each and every site at a cost of anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 US dollars. So how should service providers resolve high costs of troubleshooting problems without having to deploy expensive probes at each and every location? Well, let's begin by looking at some of the requirements of the sites that need monitoring. Service providers typically focus on the problems located in the last mile. That's because approximately 80% of the problems happen there. As with most networks, the core consists of very few locations, and as we get further out to the end user, near the access sites, the number of devices is increased up to a thousand times. The type of sites where equipment resides include the central offices, data centers, and cellular towers. These sites have requirements around rack density and power requirements, so using typical server-based equipment on these sites is really out of the question. They do, however, have provider-owned fiber lines going into and out of them, and have the potential of lighting new lines at these new sites. Okay, let's take a look at those constraints again. First up, we have rack space. Service providers need a solution that can provide ultimate visibility while simultaneously using as little rack space as possible. Next, we look at scale. If providers are to avoid placing probes at each site, they must have a solution that can scale both up and down to meet their needs. For instance, it's necessary to provide visibility to the access sites and aggregate this traffic back to more intelligent devices further into the core. At those sites, providers can use advanced filtering techniques to view only the traffic of interest for each probe necessary. We'll focus on scale in just one moment. And finally, we have power. With the growing cost of energy and the continued curve of CPU power consumption, providers need to virtualize as much as possible. 
where they can't virtualize, providers must look at next generation hardware that utilizes low power consumption chips purpose built for hardware acceleration of packets. As I previously mentioned, there are a number of requirements facing providers who wish to be proactive in monitoring their video networks. Scaling these solutions from both a cost and architecture perspective can be quite difficult, but here I've got a couple of tips that will help you scale your monitoring solutions. Number one, use hardware acceleration where it makes sense. For instance, if you're looking at the Access Network, it doesn't necessarily make sense to purchase equipment that uses network processor cards. They're extremely expensive and in most cases overkill. Utilizing FPGA-based solutions at that level will offer almost no latency in forwarding the packets to their intended destinations. Additionally, purpose-built devices can forward traffic to multiple locations, acting as a sort of multicast management switch. 2. Packet slicing offers additional scale to users as it enables applications that don't need to see the entire packet to view more data on the wire. For instance, in a typical MPEG-2 transport stream, the packets are approximately 188 bytes. Users can often eliminate three-fourths of that data by slicing down to only the necessary header information for packet-based analysis. And that really leads us to number three, the utilization of packet-based quality algorithms. These types of algorithms, while not necessarily the most accurate in the industry, have a high enough correlation coefficient to make them extremely useful. I definitely suggest operations management look into these types of algorithms. There are several in the market, such as Telkami's VQMon agent, Symmetricom's V-Factor, and Exfo Service Assurance's VQI. There will always be a place for reference-based algorithms, such as Opticom's PEVQ and ITU J.144. If you're watching this on your computer, there are links to each of these on the screen for you. Finally, and most importantly, centralize as much as possible. Management of these tools and routers is extraordinarily difficult, and it often requires a team of people with specialized training. Why not reduce costs by up to 80% by centralizing management and network tools? According to the Aberdeen Group, best-in-class organizations have 120% improvement in application availability as compared to their peers when using enablers like distributed traffic capture systems for centralization. Distributed traffic capture systems increase scalability through the use of aggregation, selective aggregation, filtering, and advanced packet slicing techniques. They also lower the total cost of ownership for management tools. This is accomplished primarily by reducing the number of tools, lowering capital expenditures, and by lowering operational costs. Because of the reduction in the number of tools, the ongoing maintenance for the management equipment is also significantly reduced. This has helped lower our customers' costs by up to 80% in year one alone.